now proudly presented on SNME. That's Sunday night's main event. Patreon and free feed. We just people from the north side. Once the Timmy's hit the shore fine. Went to ready on the four ties. Heavy traffic during four five. Got a hustle on the own time. Color people every port side. We just people from the Hey guys, the- what's going on? It's your host, your boy George McKay and the one and only Uncle Bobby V, baby. He goes so deep with it. it. Makes me feel like awkward. Like I gotta compete on octaves when he does that. Maybe I just, just speak normally. <laughs> Anyways, guys, this is MLW Rewind, and we are here to discuss oh, once upon a time in New York. Once upon a time. Once upon a time. Uh, it was their weekly, or should I say bi-weekly, free event that they do on YouTube. And uh, we have the opportunity to kick this in a little early and check it out. And we're going to give our full rundown, which will air right after the event airs live on YouTube later tonight. So without further ado, uh, let's get into it. Main event on this card was going to be Matt Riddle versus Davy Boy Smith, just in case you're wondering if the graphic behind us didn't give it away. So, you know. You that was want. the main event? That was the not main event. I was gonna say, I thought the six man, the scramble. This one felt more like a main event to me. I'll be it honest. It did, to be honest, but uh, it felt yeah. more like a main event to me. So that's why for me it was. I get the six man was. We'll get into that. But I mean, once you guys watch it, comment below. Let us know your thoughts because this that match was a fucking banger. I will say that. But the show opens up with none other than Caesar Durant, and he's talking about the power struggle that is between Azteca Lucha, Mosios Dorado with Selena, uh, Zendaya. Out of nowhere. Zaya? Zaya? Zeta. So Zendaya, get... you, did you watch Spider-Man recently? I did, actually. I did. <laughs> Zeta interrupts with none other than uh, BRG or Brett Ryan Gosling, if you must know. And uh, she doesn't care. She doesn't care about the power struggle. She doesn't care about any of it. She should be the number one contender. That's it, plain and simple. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, okay? And uh, at that point, though... They're both interrupted by Selena De La Renta with Rocky Romero behind her beating the crap out of one of the Lucha henchmen. Like, just beating the ever-loving shit out of this guy. And Selena says, no one's going to touch Janai Kai. No one. And that's it. Plain and simple. CD is very upset, and he storms right up. And at that point, we get into the six-way scramble. The first entry for the match, none other than BRG. That's why he was out there with Zeta. Almost like muscle backup, but I really don't think Zeta needs muscle backup. Yeah. I mean, they're besties. I get it. Like, they definitely seem to shop at the same store. Oh, yeah. Wear the same furs. Yeah. yeah. Also, ironically enough, have the same hairstylist. He's got the guy lights. She's got the blonde highlights. I almost feel like they uh, they traveled the road together. He's, he's possible. It's plausible. It's plausible. It is. All right. So, again, this six-way scramble consisted of BRG, Dylan McKay, and Marcus Mathers, but not as a tag team, separate members of this fight. Love Doug, Itchy Bond, and Cannonball from the calling, representing. And as Cannonball comes out, he is attacked by Akira, who then is attacked by Ricky Shane Page and Sammy Callahan, who then is attacked by Jake Chris. Now, an all-out brawl ensues while Cannonball is just on the ground, out for the count. Security staff comes out. They get fucked up, but they do separate the calling and the now newly formed death fighters from killing each other. Cannonball for this portion of the match is MIA. He's at the top of the ring. He's recovering from the assault by Akira, but the six-way scramble does kick off. This was fast and furious. All the middleweight guys got their spots in. I loved it. Everyone had a moment to shine, which is great. And everybody was gelling. And there was some symmetry, man. There was some symmetry. We were talking about specifically... The fluidity of Love Doug and Mathers. Those two guys were fluid in any maneuvers that they were throwing together. Dylan McKay as well. Itchy Bond is fluid with anybody they can work with. All the middleweight guys, even Brett Ryan Gosling included, they all got their spots in and they all did really, really well. But at one point, Brett Ryan Gosling, you know, he gets a ego trip going and he's interrupted by finally joining the match, Cannibal. And when he turns around, just mouths the word, oh shit, Cannibal punches his face. And uh, then a low blow ensues. And Dylan McKay, who almost had the win, is reverse rolled up by BRG, who steals the win in the six-way scramble. Uh, but all in all, as usual, MLW does a fantastic job of kicking off their events with a great scramble-type match or great middleweight or lucha match. These guys really delivered. I enjoy this match. And taking out Cannonball in the early stages by Akira was smart because other than that, it would have just been the typical... Five little guys on the big guy to try to get him out so they could get their spots in. But this worked the opposite way because they didn't have to do that. But I enjoyed this match. What did you think? Yeah, it was a fun match. Uh, 
and I'm gonna bring it off right off the top. If you've listened before, you know I'm a gear guy. I really like, I really appreciate some nice gear, and everybody in this match just had really nice looking gear. Marcus Mathers, that that gear he had on was fire. I don't know who made that, if it was Sway or somebody, but it's great. Uh, and then the match itself, yeah, the timing, everything looked really fluid. Yep, shout out to Love Dog and Marcus Mathers. Their their uh, sequence they ran looked so nice. Uh, all these guys looked really solid in there. It was a very fun match to kind of uh, kick things off. Definitely a strong way to start the show. I, I enjoyed this one. Next match on the card was a very quick squash match. Uh, big bad dude, big bad dude Tito. There we go. It's a mouthful. Uh, versus a Hashtag Lucha henchman. Uh, and this was a squash match just to send a straight message to Cesar Duran from Selena Bellarenta. And it was delivered with a very quick, uh, explorer suplex into, uh, whatever that finisher he has is it looks dangerous as fuck. Oh, that dude is wicked though. Like I really yeah, absolutely is. see more of this guy. Bad dude Tito looks the part, looks natural. He looks like a badass. Uh, I really hope we see more of this guy. He's great. Absolutely. And um, shout out to the henchman. I mean, he put up a great fight. He did. Uh, but uh, there was no way he was winning this match. Even if uh, bad dude Tito had a um, fever. Yeah. He was still going to win. Pretty much. All right. Uh, next moment on the card is MSL. He introduces AJ Francis by listing all the NFL teams that he was signed by and never played for. AJ comes out to talk trash about New York and everything that's evolved with New York, and he is interrupted. A lot of interruptions today, eh? Really interrupted. interrupted. Yeah, very interruptive. I like that. By Alex Kane, the leader of the Bumaye Fight Club, who is bringing out Mr. Thomas because AJ Francis and Mr. Thomas were about to throw down, and there was a little trash talk and battle back and forth between Francis and Kane because we know those two are going to face each other at War Chamber uh, in the end of April. Um, but uh, regardless of the fact, or should I say, sorry, in the end of March, uh, that's right, Good Friday is when War Chamber drops. So look out for that. Uh, Thomas is enough at this point and he jumps in the ring and he just berates francis with a huge amounts of shots rips off his vest to uh display that god-awful ring gear that he has i'm not a ring gear guy i could care less but aj francis you need a new ring gear man that ring gear is is it's it's very blinding the lime green on the money is a lot to take in and it's uncomfortable to watch you are a wrestler and you know good or bad people love you hate you whatever their opinions are i'm indifferent of you i really am but the gear it blinds me it yeah, hurts my eyes. Funny you brought that up because I was going to bring it up. I, I knew you were. I was giving you the lead way. It's it's just too much. It's too much going on, like with that gear. It's just too much. Hmm. Fucking dollar bill prints and flags and, and writing and, and it's like under undergarments and overgarments. It's too much, bro. Just tone it down a slight bit. It'll help you, like. Maybe I don't know what the, what the fuck I'm talking about, but just as a fan watching that, it was like an assault on the eyes. I was getting sensory overload from your gear. The match itself, like, like, like the match itself was what it was. It was, it was fine. It was two big boys going at it, and Francis, uh, surprisingly enough, though, did get the win by hitting that cash out. I do like that finisher. Now, mind you, it was off the MSL distraction, but he did still score the win and a huge victory because this is Francis continuing to. I mean, he's already planted seeds of doubt with loyalties in Bumaye. Now to get the win over the person who he pretty much singled out as the person who might be turning his back on Alex Kane. I mean, it's a huge message across the board. Um, definitely works more into the storyline as these two literally come to blows on March 29th. But yeah, like you were saying, sensory overload on the on the gear. Very distracting. This was a quick match. Uh, but I will say this, Mr. Thomas, look at in even better shape than he usually does. He always looks great in shape, but I don't know, for today, he looked more defined. And uh, I got to say, I, I, the more and more I see Mr. Thomas work, the more and more I'm impressed. And I, I'm, I'm liking that we're getting to see him more individually, not just being Alex Kane's corner man, because he is definitely, there's more layers to Mr. Thomas than just being a corner uh, man, but I enjoyed it. Yeah, I'll tell you what, though. I did I, I did not like the Hurricane Rana, and I'll tell you why. It's like, it's cool. When a big man demonstrates some agility and does a cool move like that. But I'm like, if we're in simulated combat and we're in a fight and I'm that big and tall and I can hit that hard, why the fuck am I going to do a Hurricane Rana? A Hurricane Rana is great when you're a smaller guy who's agile and you have to rely on your speed and your flash. To create to get you, space. To get you through a match. 
a guy as big as Mr. Thomas, there's no reason he needs to be doing a Hurricane Rana. So, like, it, it's like, hey, cool that you can do that. You have that ability. But as far as your persona and your character and how you work, it didn't fit. Like, it just didn't fit. And that was the only thing that took me out of the match. It was, like, more of a, I'm going to, you know, pop everyone that I can do a Hurricane Rana. But it didn't fit in the context of the match. That's my only critique there. Fair enough, but I, I mean, I, I do think it's it's cool for him to want to show that agility, but you're right. Maybe a better move uh, or a move that is more defined towards the storyline you're trying to tell in the match. It didn't, it took us out of the story of the match, which is something you don't ever want to happen. Right, because you don't need to do a hurricane run and flip guys around because you're strong. You can hit, you can suplex, you can do all kinds of other moves, whereas a smaller guy needs to rely on that. I'm going to use my opponent's weight against them and flip them over. To, to create damage rather than hitting them directly because I don't have that kind of strength. Like, that's how I see it. Again, what do I know? That's just my opinion. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, a rare recap from MLW because there really hasn't been much fusion, so there hasn't been really a chance to rebuild storylines that much lately as what they've been doing in 2024 is something different. But we get a recap of the war between Cesar Durant and Selena De La Renta. From the beginning to the kidnapping of Selena, then the eventual kidnapping of Cesar Durant, to the mind games, the bag under Selena's desk, all in all in all to where we are now. And Selena, it joins Joe Dombrowski and um, Christian on commentary, and she sprays Joe right in the mouth with a bottle of perfume. I, I'm not sure if it was her Great way of sell, saying, Joe. Great right, sell. Absolutely phenomenal sell. Phenomenal sell. Uh, it, it, literally, they just, the camera, it was perfect cutting too. The camera cut right to him and bam, she he didn't even get a chance to say a word. And it was and, and and her response was it smelt disgusting over here. In her defense, now if you've ever attended a professional wrestling show, it does smell a lot it, like beer. It, it's it's not the most uh, olfactory pleasing uh, situation. They're not going to sell this scent for your car. Put it that way. Yeah, like most indie shows I've been to, smell like feet or bo or a combination of the two. So. Hmm. You know, no disrespect to Joe. I'm sure he smells perfectly pleasant individually. But in the context of the entire room, I can't really blame Selena. Like, that's actually not a bad strategy. Okay. Yeah, but you don't need to spray it in the man's fucking mouth. <laughs> I've been to some shows where people could have used some perfume sprayed well, in their mouth. Banaka, so. Banaka works just as well. It doesn't make somebody well, gag. Somebody needs to let the indie wrestling world know this because... Banaka? Banaka, like, honestly... What about those Listerine strips? Those little, like, travel size deodorant? Like, shows should just... Throw those out at the door as like a part mm. of your cover. You get a you get a little deodorant thing. Just throwing this out there, guys. <laughs> Rob is making the indie wrestling world aware of the options that are you available. You smell, to... you stink. Okay. All right, all right. I'm tired of going to shows where everybody right. smells. All right, all right. Can we? Are you done now? Yeah, I mean. Okay. All right, and we're going to move on past the smell. So we're going to get past it all, okay? Um, so anyways, the recap. And this is, uh, she is joining commentary for the number one contenders match that was developing between Zeta and the god queen dummy exo now zeta comes out you know typical wtf representation and um delmi comes out but delmi is not alone no no delmi is joined by caesar durant and we all remember how this all tied together guys there were little hints eggs being planted and we finally get i guess the big reveal if we will that we knew it was coming but now it's solidified okay delmi exo coming out with Caesar Durant is genius because it's that old saying the enemy of my enemy is my friend so you Delmi and CD both share a common enemy in Selena De La Renta so join form is for forces on a permanent or semi-permanent basis we're not sure the timeline of this arrangement but for right now they are a united front they are a united front and this match was typical Delmi and typical Zeta. Zeta, she's got a promising future. It's not her time right now. Delmi was able to, you know, do everything, picture perfect, land a Delmi driver for the win. And as Delmi walks away or is celebrating the match, Zeta rolls out from underneath. She starts running her mouth about how she was screwed over, this and that. And she could beat anyone in the featherweight division. She can even take out that karate kid wannabe, Janai Kai, at that exact moment. Promocio Dorado's music hits. Selena on one side, Janai on the other. Zeta gets smacked right in the face. And CD jumps in and says, look at this. We've got the featherweight champion here. We've got the number one contender here. Let's do this match now. What do you guys think? The crowd is going crazy. They want it. They want it, Rob. They want it to happen right now. Selena says, we don't work for you. We're not going to do it. CD says, so classy. 
$10 words from a $2 whore. Quote, unquote. Burn of the fucking night. Cesar Durant, boys got shots. You're on fire. Respect. Hands down on the one-liner. It was quick. It was witty. It was phenomenal. But, Rob, what did you think about this whole interchange? Because we know the uh, we know that Janai is going to be defending her title against... Uh, sorry, who's debuting? At War Chamber, I don't want to say the name wrong. Oh, shit. I, I forgot. I have to look her up again. It okay. Was, uh... She's Japanese. She's a Japanese know. wrestler, yep. They're bringing in more of the Japanese talent, which is fantastic. I just don't want to screw the name up. And there have been times Rob has not been able to join me here, so I've had to do my very best. And I think I've done okay. I don't think I've screwed them up too horribly. But I, I do have, with the four um, names, I'm not unagi, the best. Unagi? Unagi Sayaka. Uh, okay, so Unagi Sayaka. But like, okay, and just... Wait, like Unagi, like... Uh, that, that's where I was going with okay. this. Like Unagi, like barbecue eel? Ah, salmon spring, salmon, salmon, salmon spring roll. Salmon spring roll. Whatever. Salmon spring roll? Yeah, this? salmon spring rolls are awesome. I don't know if that's ever been. It's not a thing, but it sounds awesome. But yeah, Unagi Sayaka. Salmon spring roll. She looks like just a little video package they show the version. She looks like she can go, so let's do it. It's going to be a great match. But regardless, we are eventually going to see Delmi and Janai go at it for the title. Or maybe we're going to see Delmi and Unagi go at it. You know, you know what I kind of liked here, though, was that, uh, that, that package we got with the recap. To it was me, nice to refresh everything. To me, that's important because a some of that stuff happened literally like years ago now. Um, yeah, and and that also shows that MLW is acknowledging they have a lot of new viewers that maybe aren't as savvy on what happened a few years ago. Uh, so they're giving them that background, which is which is key because that helps you buy into the the feud. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but next to the calling debut storyline, which a lot of the fans may or may not know, this has actually been the longest running story that I think. MLW has done in a very long time. Like you said, this one spans years on and off. This storyline is one they put away and picked back up when they needed to. Right. So it's 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 kind of been going, right? With with C D and and uh Selena. Yeah. yeah, the power struggle has always kind of been there. And then let's not even mention Contra, like you throw them into the equation, mm. right? So Deadly. yeah, I think MLW is recognizing they've got some existing fans, they've got some new fans who were tuning in. They gotta give them some more background, but I like that. I, I like that. I like knowing there's more eyes on the product because MLW for some reason is just still seems to be the best kept secret in professional wrestling and I don't know why it's a secret. Tremendous matches going on, tremendous talent, great stories being told. Uh it's very accessible to watch. Great character development. Fantastic. So I, I really don't know why we're not seeing more people catching on of how good MLW is. It's it's beyond me. I'm maybe I'm missing something obvious. I don't know. But uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing where this goes with CB and Selena and how Contra may or may not factor into this. Uh, so let's go. $10 word for a $2 whore. Line of the night. Hands down, line of the night. It, it literally shut down the biggest mouth in MLW. Once he said that, Selena had nothing to do. Oh, and shout out to uh, Jesus Rodriguez, man. Nice shot on Cesar Durant. You're about a foot and a half to the left, but hey, you tried. That's all I'm going to say. Momentum got the best deal on that one, dude. I'm sorry, but I, I listen, I am not a fighter. I'm not a trained professional wrestler. But if you're going to try to punch somebody over the ropes, make it believable. You know, just please make it believable. All right. Anyways, we're going on to the next match on the night, which is Davey Boy Smith Jr. versus Matt Riddle. This one is just for pride. There are no titles on the line. There is no nothing. This is for pride. Who is the better wrestler? That's what this match is about. And MSL's on commentary. He's enjoying everything, calling the match very biasly, by the way. But calling the match, nonetheless, this was a great match. Uh, Riddle and Davy Boy showing their skill sets, skill sets, going to the ground. So many submission attempts, so many, so many strikes. Matt Riddle's striking ability is disgustingly dangerous. And Davy Boy Smith, he got in a few good shots as well. This match was fantastic, but that roll-up by Davy Boy Smith into the reverse roll-up by Matt Riddle securing the win. And even Riddle was surprised by the fact that he got him. Because I'm not sure he thought he pinned him for the three count, but he did. And it was great. It was great. And at one point, when Matt Riddle is celebrating, Joy Bishop, who came out with David Boy Smith, he goes in the ring to confront Matt Riddle. And what happens? Like Ronnie and Jersey Shore, one shot kid. This guy was laid the fuck out. Laid the fuck out. Bishop was knocked out cold by Matt Riddle, one shot, and that was it. Uh, what did you think of this match? I, I Like I said, this was a banger match tonight, in my opinion. This should have been the main event. The main event was great. It was fun, but I really think this should have been the main event. But that's just me. What do you got? Uh, you know, I, Matt Riddle, I always liked Matt Riddle. 
But I like him more the more I'm seeing him now just kind of hmm. free from the... WWE machine? Yeah, yeah, I guess. I don't want to say, like, shackles, because I don't know how bad... I can say shackles. I said, no, I'm we saying we know the machine. WWE is a machine. Yeah, so I don't know how much he was shackled creatively or whatnot. I know he's he said, like, hey, man, I'm, I'm a PR disaster. I get it. Like, I, you know, I smoke weed and I get porn stars pregnant. And that's my, I don't you think know... The pregnancy thing was more the problem. The weed probably was. Well, you know, it's it's... It, Publicly traded company image means a lot. He's a draw, but is he enough of a draw that they can sweep that kind of stuff under the rug? Probably not. Like, is it? It's no difference than Dana White bringing out former President Donald Trump to show his political ties. Whatever. That's that's. I'm just saying. Yeah, I, I mean, politics. It's a you. It's it's an industry where people punch each other in the face. I'm not expecting extreme liberalism over there, but. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I wasn't saying that. No, I'm just, I, and I'm not a liberal so I, by chance. I just want to so throw that know. bucket out. But yeah, no, Riddle, I, I just, I like him more every time I see him. I think he's he's enjoying himself a lot more. It's showing in his wrestling. I love that he still works that MMA hybrid style where he's he goes for those triangle chokes a lot, throwing arm bars. And of course, Davey's a grappler, so he knows how to work with that stuff. Uh, I, I made a comment early in the match, you know, I, you know it still kills me that he wrestles barefoot. Like, I get UFC, you know, combat sports, you wrestle, you fight barefoot. I get that. Mm -hmm. that that's probably why he just wrestles barefoot. It's, it's probably, a, yeah, comfortable. But having said that, later in the match, when Davy Boy Smith has the sharpshooter locked on, he couldn't hold it in there because Riddle had no boots on, keeping his feet rigid. He probably had sweaty feet. He was able to slide his way out of there. So I'm like, you know... It's maybe more than just a comfort thing. It's a strategy thing. Hmm. So it's pretty, pretty interesting uh, the way they worked that. I uh, thought this was a great match again. Uh, Davy Boy, 44 years old. You wouldn't know it. Uh, he looked fantastic. Both these guys put in a hell, hell of a performance. I really liked this match. Uh, hope we see more stuff just like this. Riddle's been a bit of a, I want to say a bit of a breath of fresh air in MLW. Not that they needed fresh air, but he has been one. Since he's arrived, we're putting on some great matches, and hell yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying it. I agree with you. This was my match tonight as well. I would I would actually say, I would throw this out, and maybe you might agree with me, you might not. This is Davey Boy and Matt Riddle's best performance since both returning to MLW for their second runs here. Davey Boy's been back a little bit longer than Matt Riddle, but I feel like this was the strongest performance by both of them. Honorable mention for Davey Boy Smith would be the no ropes match with Alex Kane. That's what I was going to say. I go, if not this, then that match he had with Alex Kane was probably... Uh, his best performance but yeah if if riddle's coming out here and getting the best out of everybody you can't ask for much more from a guy who's working new japan and, and other places so hell yeah hell yes yeah and uh shout out to matt riddle because i am so excited to be calling your match on may 19th dusty Bowl wrestling in oshawa i'm so stoked to be looking forward to meeting with you hopefully we get some chance to sit down and talk but none regardless to call a matt riddle match that's huge uh for me so i'm honored for that and i cannot wait for that to happen um if you're in the oshawa area get your tickets now i know they are on sale all right and uh now court bowers got a big announcement rob huge announcement he's coming out to the new york crowd and he's telling them he's a new yorker and he's got something big to announce and at that moment he is interrupted by contra not mads kruger but contra yeah that's right the death squad is out in full effect and they take out court bauer hard they even take out half of the roster that did come out to help mathers came out ichiban came out dylan mckay came out there was actually one more name that came out i can't remember who it was but they all got laid the fuck out and then two death squad members holding court bauer in front of the screen as mads kruger cuts a promo probably one of the darkest yet most ominous promos that mads kruger's cut and i love the fact that we could hear all the audio i want to repeat that the second coming of mads kruger is phenomenal audio keep it going the blood is on your hands, Court Bauer. Your hands. And the fact is, is that Mads Kruger and Contra are going to welcome welcome MLW to a dark age. And then, bam, Court Bauer gets knocked in the back of the head with not a baton, but whatever the death squad uses. It looks like a baton, but it isn't. Um, and he's laid out cold along with the rest of the wrestlers that the death squad cleaned out. They literally decimate like a force there must have been what 20 of them that came out in that one shot it was there crazy was a squad there was a squad for sure uh court bauer laid out and at that point sgc comes out to lend a hand to try to get court bauer up medical attention is uh given to everyone 
We know a couple of wrestlers were taken to hospital in ambulances. So we hope everybody's okay. Local medical facility. Local medical sorry, local medical facility. Oh, and shout out to the idiot that when the cop car was trying to get to the venue, the random person who jaywalked in front of a cop car, what the fuck is wrong with you, dude? Like, I'm sorry. I, I get it. I get it. But come on, man. Like, Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah. I said that to Rob. I was like, this fuck, this. It was like it was like mall rats. That fucking kid is back on the ask. This fucking guy jaywalks in front of a cop car with sirens on. With sirens on. That means it's going towards an emergency and you fucking jaywalk. I'm sorry. Shout out to that guy because you're idiot of the fucking night. All right, Rob, what did you think of this whole sequence? We didn't get to hear Corp Power's announcement. But what do you think about Mads Kruger's promo? That ominous words that the blood is on your hands. Uh it was it was interesting. It made me curious where we're gonna go with this we're gonna see a full-fledged contra revival maybe with joseph samael if it'll be a different contra with just mads kruger at the helm well they've kind of been hinting towards that it is mads kruger i don't know if he has somebody pulling his strings but right now he is the face of contra he is the know. face we don't know well that's right why. now he's who we're seeing right but that's what i'm saying i'm curious to see where it's going to progress mm. how it's going to interact with everybody else that's going on uh one thing i will say about core bauer uh, as a guy who runs owns the promotion, he's really good about not inserting himself too much. Like he's he doesn't, from what I can tell, have that kind of ego where he's like, well, just because I run the thing, I need to be in it all the time. The only time he's ever over. the only time he's ever done that is I, I will say this one moment which was amazing was him. And uh, Mance Warner. Yeah, that was great, though. And Mance was bitching that match. That was, that was I He gives him the beer. That was like, like awesome. how, how often do we see Court Bauer? Like once you know. every three to six oh, months? Oh, we do, it's special. It's right. special. So I give him credit for that, for being a guy who doesn't sit there and go, like, I need to get myself over because I run the show. Like, no, he's good. been pretty much vocal yeah. on the fact that he's not that when type he, of over. When he's there, it's for a reason, not just to put himself on camera. So I like that about him. And uh, the way that, like, again, this is a perfect example of using yourself properly. I'm going to make an announcement, and then you got decimated along with the rest of the of the whole roster. That shows that Contra is not just, you know, they'll not just take down a wrestler. They'll take down anybody. It gives a, an extra layer of terror to this reign of terror. Well, if, are, if you're going to attack somebody from the inside, you're going to cut off the head of the snake. Right, and core power is exactly yeah he said that as well so I, I i like this i thought it was a cool way to go about it uh you, you instantly establish that dominance from contract because they just laid out everybody right they've got an army now so in your mind even though you haven't seen contra lately they're already up here in terms of strength right they're laying out everybody so it gives them that that powerful image so i, I like the way this was this was worked it was good Absolutely, absolutely. I loved it as well. Uh, next match on the card is a Lucha match for Pride. Kind of another uh, shot fired in the war between Azteca Lucha and Promocio Serrato. Representing Azteca Lucha is Magnus. Fantastic talent. Don't know too much about him, but what we saw, we were impressed. You the name, though. I did. I did. It was pretty much easy to nail. And uh, next person being represented, Promocio Serrato. one, too. Star Junior. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Super easy. Hey, but shout out to me for pronouncing Promocios Dorado properly. Hell yeah. Oh yeah. I'm getting better. I'm getting better. See how. Um, bueno. Yeah. What's that? What's that thing that you? Rosetta Stone. My Rosetta Stone lessons are helping. Oh, I'm trying to babble. Okay. Nice. Nice. You trying to learn Spanish too? No. Uh, no. No. I'm trying to learn Spanish. Would you, you babble? No. Sorry. I was thinking about Bumble. Bumble's the dating app, right? No, I'm on that one too, though. Oh, okay. Well. All right. Bumble babble. Are you babbling on Bumble? <laughs> no, I'm, not. I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to meet women, not offend them with my horrible Spanish. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, this match was nothing horrible at all. This match was fucking fire. Uh, these two laid it all out. A uh, shout out to the crowd in the front row. They got dropped on a few times by Star Junior and by Magnus, but they held their own. Glad to see those guys were still upright by the end of the match. Uh, but uh, this match was fucking awesome, and Star Junior scoring the win and a big momentum shift for. Promotios Dorado, CD and Magnus unhappy with the result attacking the referee after the match before they storm out before we get into our main event. But this match was exactly what a lucha match is supposed to be. It was fun. It was exciting. Star Junior and Magnus, they were the unsung stars of Once Upon a Time in New York for sure. Yeah, Once Upon a Time in New York, we had a couple Mexican guys come up and tear shit up. It was great. It was lucha. It was sequences. It was high flying. It was fantastic. 
I was a little miffed by the dive to the outside because I'm like, you you could have kicked a fan in the face very easily there. That was a little over the top for me. But likely enough, nobody was, and they were nobody still okay. Was. And shout out to, to Jesus Rodriguez because I saw you go out there and make sure that fan was okay. We both saw that. Uh, so good good on you for doing that and good on the fan for just being a trooper and not making a big deal out of it because I have seen some fans who get brushed and throw a big fit. So, uh, not Yeah, but most of the fans we've seen that are 10 or, 10 or younger. Well, I mean, there's a, yeah, there's I, I've seen all kinds of fans. There's even been here in Ontario, somebody tried to file a lawsuit over getting touched because they were in the crowd and they got brushed. For, yeah, oh, silliness, fun. silliness. So Jesus Rodriguez, good on you, good on the fan for just taking it like a champ. But yeah, it was a little... Little myth, I'm like, that's a wee bit close, like for that, like a, a barrel roll dive, and, and you, you end up almost entirely in the crowd. Little, little dangerous, but hey, the match itself was great. Uh, it was a big win for Star Jr. So, I hope we see more of these guys. I love that we're bringing in, and, and you know, I don't follow Lucha Libre that closely as much as I enjoy the style. I, I can't watch all the wrestling in the world, you know what I mean? So, I don't know a lot of these guys. But seeing them up here, I love that because it's bringing exposure. Now, here's two new guys that I can follow, you know, that I've seen that are awesome. So I really enjoy that about MLW. They've got their established core group. Mm -hmm. They've got some people they bring in per appearance deals, work programs. It's a great way to run things because you still have a core group. But then you don't get tired of just seeing the same people against each other all the time. You bring in these, like Okamura, that's great to see him up there. If you don't know Okamura, he's been in japan since 2005 he's like whenever they send japanese wrestlers over there okamura takes care of them you know what i mean shows them around it, it's it's great i love seeing this stuff japanese mexico america the uk wherever all collaborating it's amazing what pro wrestling is about collaboration over competition 150 percent, and it's made event time but first we get a very ominous video of a man walking up a flight of stairs all we see is feet Polish shoes, very nice shoes actually, wing tipped, fantastic. We hear whistling. And then we look over into the corner and we see Rocky Romero knocked the fuck out. Then the person who's whistling places two quarters on each of Rocky's eyes. The camera turns, mm. shocker, it's Caesar Durant. And he says, lead or silver? Plomo y plata. You decide, Selena. And then that's it. That was the, that's the vignette. So now cd retaliation to not getting the win over star jr and promotions dorado has now taken out selena's number one that's right you take out the number one you are that much closer to selena being unprotected the only person left to protect her now is jesus rodriguez and janai kai but again he's got a plan to you know handle janai by making delmi the number one contender and aligning forces with delmi because as i said earlier the enemy of my enemy is my friend and that's where we are right now. And it's main event time. Cozy Max and Alex Kane versus the WTF, Lawler, Holiday, and Joey, or Josh Bishop. I was going to say Joey, but I caught myself. Josh Bishop. And this one was exactly what you would expect. A lot of high flying, a lot of combo attacks, a lot of power, a lot of striking, uh, and the leader of the Bread Club scoring the win with a lariat on Bishop for the one, two, three. But just as Cozy Max and Kane are celebrating, WTF comes out, Davy Boy comes out. He's attacking Cozy Max. Uh, AJ Francis comes out. He's attacking Kane. Then we got the Death Fighters coming out, attacking the Calling. SGC's out there to try to make the save. It's pandemonium, JR style. And at the end of it all, WTF is standing tall in the ring. Cozy Max and Alex Kane may have won the match, but WTF standing tall at the end of Once Upon a Time in New York. Meaning that they, so far, think they have won the war as MLW goes off the air. This was a fun event. This was great. The matches were awesome. The stories moved ahead. And MLW, as we've said before, firing on all cylinders. I enjoyed every part of Once Upon a Time in New York. Rob, what do you got? Well, what's your thoughts on the final match? And what do you got about everything else that took place? I enjoyed the final match. It was more of, um, it wasn't so much like, let's go out to have a match as it's a storyline type thing. Mm -hmm. isn't it? We're going to really force this. We're going to progress force. things ahead. Yes. No, force isn't the, isn't the right word. But we're going to progress this rivalry. Uh, I also think, you know, having Alex Kane on that team, we've seen Alex as, like, a heel, but just so good that even though he's a heel, you can't help but cheer for him. So he was kind of like almost a tweener or an anti-hero kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But now, you know, positioning him with, with 
with Kojima, and, and it's it's a little different, and and we're maybe seeing that move towards a purely babyface Alex Kane. I only think we're I only think we're gonna get the babyface Kane is if Mister Thomas does turn his back on him. Then Which, I feel like we will get the full babyface Kane. I feel like the seeds have been planted by the commentary team and stuff like that for that to happen. So I think, and I think we talked about this before, like Alex Kane is probably like, yeah, let's run this program, get get our boy Mr. Thomas like over more than he is. Because I think he's, he's over. Mr. Thomas is great. Uh, so yeah, this will, this will be fun. I, just one more thing I, I want to circle back to because I forgot. AJ Francis calling out Alex Kane for losing the MLW World title at the beginning of Black History Month. Uh, you know, it wasn't intentional that he lost it like that. that was the storyline to it ended there. But... Francis using that that was great because I because that so twice hurt, he's used that that hurt Alex's pride right that was a good one and I'll give him credit for that and then he took his jacket off and we were blinded by and his, we were blinded yeah, by the, by the, the gear pills. no good <laughs> which is one team he was not signed by the NFL eh there you, <laughs> there you go pun on words but regardless once upon a time in New York was a massive success in our eyes the rewind is happy we enjoyed it as fans as you should and that's what pro wrestling is about you got to ask yourself the rob question were you entertained we were so if you were entertained then you'd enjoyed once upon a time in, in New York just like we did and that's it for this rewind peace love and wrestling i'm your host your boy george mckay I'm Uncle Bobby V, baby, and adios. See you guys next time. We just people from the north side. Once the Timmy's hit the shore fine. Went to ready on the four ties. Heavy traffic during four five. Got a hustle on the own time. Color people at be port side. We just people from.